this kind of started in, I don't know how long you want this to go, but started about 1985. And that's a long time ago, probably before you guys were born. And when I first got the idea, my dad, I'm from Rockwell City originally. Um, and my dad had a, he was a big time golf, not a big time, but he played golf a lot and got me started when I was like eight. And he had a book in the living room called Golf Courses of the World. I thought, well, that's interesting. I looked at it. It was fine. You know, and I kind of talked to him a little bit about, I wonder if there's a golf course book about Iowa, you know, about all the courses. And I kind of did some research and really couldn't find anything. Minnesota, Nebraska, nobody really had one at the time. They had some travel things that just had lists of the courses maybe, and but no pictures or any guide or anything. So I, I started out in 85. And that time I was a uh, classroom teacher. I was an art teacher, K-12 art teacher. And so I really only had the summers to do it. So it took me if I remember two and a half summers to kind of cover all the courses. And in the first book, I should have looked it up. But I think there was like 360 courses at that time. I'm not, don't hold me that, but around that. So it took quite a while. And I'd go out, um, basically started in 85 and would travel out from Jefferson. I've lived in Jefferson that whole time for 42 years and did day trips out basically. There's only a couple of times that I would go over to the river, the Mississippi, and stay overnight because it just wasn't practical to drive over and back and stuff. And so I'd go out and do, um, usually try and start at sunrise, get uh, to a course at sunrise when their pictures were taken and go until the light wasn't any good anymore and then come back home. And of course the first book was done in black and white. Um, I just, just did regular film back in 85 and there's no digital thing. And I'm gonna tell you something, you might not believe it, but I developed all that film myself in my basement. Wow. Think, think what a chance that was of me developing my own film. I did not print the prints. I went to a place in Des Moines, I can't remember the name now, downtown, uh, and had them print the prints. But back then, you sent the prints in. There was no digital. You sent the prints in to have it um, them set up and do the pages and things like that. My first publisher, my first and second publisher, were was a thing called Calhoun County um, Reminder out of Rockville City. A friend of mine had it, and he did it for me. And and did the book. And so the first one was all black and white. And the third one, I retook all the pictures, went to all the courses again. I'm good for the second course too, went to all the courses again for updates. Sometimes there wasn't much update, but uh, the third one, I retook all the pictures in digital and did it that way. What did you learn through this process about golf in Iowa? Well, I've learned there's a lot of courses. Um, <laughs> I learned that in the 60s, in the early 60s, a lot of small towns like Rockwell City, Manson, Ida Grove, uh, all these courses, uh, people bought either there was a government loan or something that they bought, you know, five acres on the edge of town, or not five acres, well, and built their courses on the edge of town, basically. And they were programmed. So a lot of these small towns had courses back then. And of course, back then, a lot of them were sand, what I call sand greens. And I looked at my book the other day, and there was like, the first book had like, a little less than 10 courses that were still sand greens around the state. And I, I grew up on one. My first, my, the Rock City Twin Lakes course where I grew up on had sand greens until I don't know what year, early si or mid 60s or something when they went to grass. And so I learned how to play on sand greens, you know, that's how I would drag my putter, make a valley to the hole and, and put, the, put the ball right down the valley <laughs> of the sand to make sure I made the putt, you know. So that's the kind of courses I learned on. And I, I learned that I also tell people that I did go to every course in state. I've been on every course at least three times, many, many others. But I've also been in every bar on the course too. And, you know, so I could write a, I could write a book on the bars, on the golf course bars around the state too. And you might guess that people were kind of hesitant. I shouldn't say that. I only had one course that actually said, "No, we don't want you to do this. You know, we don't want you to go out and take a picture. We don't want any part of this." You know, and it was a kind of a small course. And, but most part, everybody was really helpful. They'd give me a cart to go out on the course, uh, to take a picture and I was asking, where's your signature, signature hole? And they would tell me and I would you know, probably take a picture of that. And, and uh, of course, sitting at the bar, people would tell me about their course, how it was the best course in the state. You know, everybody had the best course in the state. There's nothing wrong with them, you know, that uh, it was the best kept course, the best course. They'd tell me about some players and so, that was fun that way too. But I couldn't, you know, I only spent 20 minutes at the course. You know, I had to move mm -hmm. on. You know, I had a schedule that day. I had a map out. I had my route to take and I needed to, I needed to move on if I was going to get this, this done. So that's 
kind of the way that happened. So I learned that, you know, I'm uh, have always been an Iowa person, always a Northwest Iowa person, basically. And I've, at that time, uh, people of Iowa just it, it was a it was a good experience. It really was. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Spraying Mantis podcast. Please visit our website, SprayingMantisGolf.com, and buy something. Hey, and while you're at it, down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and next to that subscribe button, hit that little bell so when our next episode comes out, you get a notification. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.